Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S episode number 8. Okay, the previous episode. Um, it was again like you know broken up into three sections. The first part was uh, Lukua and Fafnir, a little funny portion where Fafnir actually tries to uh, <laughs> like you know for his uh, dojinshi to sell off but unfortunately it doesn't happen but Lukua's cosplay photos you know go out like you know quicker. <laughs> <laughs> and no one's buys Fafnir's Dojinshi's. It's kind of sad, <laughs> but I'm sure he'll get there. You know, like uh, it takes time uh, for these type of things to actually, you know. Um... <laughs> Anyways, what am I doing? I'm like trying to give advice to an <laughs> animated character. All right, that was Fafnir and Lukua. Okay, then in the next section we get to see. Um, Kobayashi and uh, Toru them talking about how like you know sleep is and like you know how like you know Kobayashi and all of them are kind of like sleeping nowadays which they never did before and like you know Kobayashi realizes that they are actually trying to mimic humans and they are like becoming like them slowly slowly and they are really comfortable with the peace in this world so that and then in the last section it was like a cute little portion where Saikawa <laughs> um, Kanna and uh, like all the other friends they try to find out some ghosts in their uh, school but they do find a creature that is Kanna finds a creature unfortunately it's not a ghost but a fairy you know an old man fairy <laughs> and Kanna later like you know returns it back to the other world so yeah that was that so yeah let's see what happens in this episode this is episode number 8 of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S so let's get started. All right, I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference, and let's get started. Okay, so here's the countdown: three, two, one, go. Obrozuka Shopping District. Okay. Oh, Zota. Oh, what? Kitty cat. What? Father's Day gifts. Oh! <laughs> Damn, the sound effects that Luqua. <laughs> Whenever Luqua comes in, the sound effects. I love this opening. It's, I think I prefer this more than the first season opening. Like you know the little rap that they do, and uh, like you know the way they dance and everything. <laughs> and then suddenly that, uh, what do you call it? The I think the beat drops. I, do do you call it that? No, and then it changes. The tune completely changes and. Here it is. And yeah. Okay, that was all right. Okay, so that's trying to get something from his father. What's he doing with the grimoire? By using magic? <laughs> that was the Japanese pun. Hmm. Yeah, you know. He wants to do it on her his own. Wait, is she misunderstanding? Oh my god, she's misunderstanding it. Chichi no he. Chichi means also, you know. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> oh my god, here we go. She she's misunderstanding it. Chichi also no dad. Chichi also means dad. <laughs> Boy. That's a misunderstanding. Magical. Oh yeah, he can uh, magic bell. Yeah. I don't think so. Ratings are there for a reason. <laughs> What did he buy? How did he get the money? I'm guessing his pocket money or something. <laughs> Look how sad. What the hell is he doing? Um. Bonding spell. Oh boy. No, you're not Daijobu. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> My God. What? <laughs> God. He could ask for a little help, I think, you know, like he, he's going to make it, but a little help. What? What's he doing? Oh, playing with Takia. <laughs> Fafnir is also there. Holy that. Oh, no. Hmm. Who's the other person with them? The green... Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, form a party. Develop his feelings. Wow, this game looks kind of cool, you know? Hmm. I love Takya's shirt. It's like an HP bar. <laughs> what? Okay. There you go. Condition. Whoa, whoa, what? Oh, really? That's cool. Um, hello. Mm, okay. Yeah, I understand that. All right. <laughs> That's really cool looking, I have to say. Hmm. 
Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Oh, Kanna's here. What? Massage tickets. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Wait, what? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. The world's only insert phrase you like. What? <coughs> oh. Okay. Oh, yeah, they never get sick. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh boy, she still has to go to work. Um. Oh my god. Uh. Well. Hmm. Nah, she needs rest. <laughs> oh no. Elma is... Hmm. It's Elma. What? Yeah. Um. Uh, you should have listened to him completely. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Charcoal? <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Fafni. Look uh... Yeah, that's good advice. <laughs> Three attempts. <laughs> yeah. An ice cream, Kanna's ice cream. Hmm. Oh, that's yogurt? Oh, I thought it was ice cream. Whoa! Oh no. Wasn't that banana? Is that banana in that? Um, she'll, she'll get more sick, I think. Or maybe not. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, the fever is going slowly, slowly. Hmm. Um. Toru, calm down. <laughs> wow, she's sweating a lot. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I think so. <coughs> Maybe like go to a doctor, I don't know. Wait, where is she going? Yeah. Wait, is she going back to her world? Whoa, the animation! God! Huh! 
Yeah, she went back to her world. My God. Oh boy. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Well. Um. Uh. Was she unable to find it? Or did she? What? Oh. Looks like berries. Nah. Wait, she ate three of them? She didn't even notice her first. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> okay. What? Oh no! Wait, what? <laughs> what a side effect is that? Oh. <laughs> what? God, what is it? Oh. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. What? Wait, it's like in a little basket. Hmm. Next day, lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> God. Not that. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. Yeah, she's going to get affected by that because of her own, like, you know, past. And the doll that she had before, you know, we see in the opening and the flashbacks little doll that she used to play with that her friends gave to her police maybe what well how can she help <laughs> yeah <laughs> Blonde maid. <laughs> um. Yeah. Oh. Oh boy. What? Oh. Uh. <clears throat> uh 
Oh boy, thunderstorm. Uh, doesn't rain make the uh, smell a little lesser? Like dampens the smell? I think so. Oh boy, this is going to dampen the smell. Yeah. Uh, to bring the umbrella. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're like... <laughs> Wait... <laughs> what the... <laughs> okay. <laughs> this casually popped out from the you know what oh ah uh, there you go hmm Hmm. Oh my god! <laughs> oh god. Whoa, what the? Wait, who made that even? <laughs> okay, that was good. Hmm, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, oh boy, that was, you know, sad, funny, and at the same time, you know, all at the same time. <laughs> Okay, so this episode uh, Again broken down into three parts. The first part was obviously uh, <clears throat> The thing with Shota and Lukua and then we go, go to Kobayashi becoming sick and the last portion we see a little bit of Ilulu's you know, story So Okay, just a sec. Um, yeah, that was it. So 
so yeah as i was saying so <clears throat> All right, the first portion, uh, Sota and uh, Lukova, then now Sota here, like she, he wants to make something for his dad. And uh, <laughs> obviously like, because he's like a little magician uh, or, a, or a mage, you know, he little, you know, he, he made something on his own. And uh, I'm not sure where he got the money from, but I'm guessing like, you know, he kind of saved his pocket money or something. So he brought the stuff, brought the ingredients. Now Luca wanted to help here, obviously. Now I thought, you know, what I thought, I, I thought they would probably mm, make it something like, um, like they, he wasn't able to uh, properly make the present that he wanted to. So then like he actually, by the end of it, he'll ask Luca for her help. She'll help her, like, you know, but like when they were uh, like, you know, playing the video game, I thought like they were going to go in that direction because in the video game as well, they're also working together, you know, like as a team. To, and when like you know um uh Takio was talking with him like giving him advice he like you know they were kind of uh, playing the game as a team and i thought he would probably say something like oh whenever like there's like high level uh, enemies you usually team up with <clears throat> team up with your friends and then you know defeat the high level monster so now, but it, not, it did not go in that direction because at the same time, I think the way they went here, uh, I think it's better because here this is um, Shota's own, what can I say, something that Shota should do on his own. Like, you know, it's like a present for his dad. So it would really kind of defeat the purpose if Luca came and helped him. So in a way, the way they went is kind of better because by the end of it, he he did it on his own. You know, he was kind of uh, lost faith in himself. But by the end of it, he was able to regain it. And excuse me, he was able to regain it, and then he was able to uh, uh, make the thing for his dad. So I think that's better because you know, just like a, a father's day. Like if he actually went and asked help from others uh, it would have been fine you know but still like it it the way they went is better in my opinion because um it's just something that he made on his own uh so yeah people supported him but in a different way huh? kind of gave him encouragement that's that's a good way so yeah and uh, now i'm sure this also boosted his own confidence because all this time he uh you know he was kind of frustrated at the fact that he himself wasn't able to do anything you know <clears throat> and luca kind of treats him as a child all that stuff so completing this on his own i think is kind of a big ac accomplishment at least for him because he was able to make this uh, on his own without anyone's help and was able to present it to his dad so, <clears throat> yeah, that was good. And, uh, <laughs> and okay, in the next scene, uh, in the next section, Kobayashi gets uh, sick. So, <coughs> so, we see here Toru who is not accustomed to do this because as she said, that Kobashi is always the person who is so energetic, so does everything on her own, doesn't really rely on others, but everyone relies on her. That person suddenly got sick, so she kind of freaked out. Now, uh, obviously, she has no experience with humans, so here she obviously got freaked out when, like, she knows that this is this probably will be fine, you know, because it's a fever. Like, she has only heard from other people that, yeah, fever comes, it's something that. You know, like the person needs to take rest for a little bit and it, it goes away on its own. Maybe take some medicine and it goes away on its own. It's nothing to uh, worry about. I'm sure she has heard this from others. But since she herself has not experienced this and she herself has not known anyone who has experienced this, this is the first time that this is happening. She obviously got freaked out because, uh, like, you know, like, however, like, how she knows the theoretical reasons and the theoretical what's going to happen 
but she never experienced it so it's kind of a what do you call it a, f a scary thing because you kind of doubt start doubting yourself i you feel like oh my god is this really how this is supposed to go like you know isn't is this something dangerous like you yourself are unable to gauge the um amount of danger that a person is in unless and until you have experienced it yourself or have seen others experience it so because this is the first time she is actually seeing someone experiencing this and she has doesn't have the practical knowledge of what happens by the end of it she got scared because and then she started remembering all the times when he saw like villages like uh, people dying in an epidemic or you know other stuff you know sickness killing people and you know that's something that she has experienced so the theoretical reasoning that she had on his head in, in her head went out and she started getting freaked out she started worrying about it and uh, <clears throat> she goes out to uh, back to her world to actually get some <clears throat> what do you call it um, something for back for kobayashi now one thing i can kind of see from this uh, this section is that she still really doesn't like relying on humans you know because um first of all she like, who did she ask first of all uh, she went and asked for advice from ilulu uh Fafni and lukwa you know so that's the first thing that i can like you know i can see here like all of those three people uh, two of them had no idea what to do obviously and obviously luca had more of a general like you know general knowledge and she helped helped her in that way but that's the first thing and then like when she has nothing else to do she, what she does is she goes back to her world to find some medicine now why i'm saying that she is still not relying on humans she's still hesitating on relying on humans is that here what she could have done is go to any of the human uh, like you know uh, friends that she has not friends but acquaintances uh, the main one being takia and asked her his like you know opinion on what to do you know and probably takia would say something like oh like this is something normal this happens uh, if you're still freaked being freaked out i like you know like i can you know talk to a doctor we can talk to a doctor and he can give some medicine and i'm sure he would have said something like that so and you know like she she could have done that and would have been able to cure kobayashi in a more effective way now she does not do that because obviously she, i'm sure she has still has the distrust uh, like you know for the humans and she's still not comfortable and completely relying on them so as soon as something precious to her gets in danger like relying on humans goes out the window she doesn't even think about it because she herself is freaked out she goes back to her world to do something that she knows will be effective you know she goes back to her world even though it's very like a complicated process she has to go through so many places and maybe like you know like, find it in a very dangerous situation or something but she does that when goes there finds the little berries or thing comes back and gives it to kobayashi so uh like you know like it, it's I said this before. It's probably going to take a lot of time for her to actually fully um, trust, in a way, in you know, in humans. So, but at least now he's actually talking with Takia whenever she is kind of uh, in a problem. Like in the beginning, when she you know uh, asks Takia that is this something like you know what should I do? Like she like I I'm, I'm sure she wouldn't have done that before when she was new here so it's kind of relying little by little but it's going to take a while i'm guessing to completely rely on them and uh, you know yeah and obviously like kobayashi like you know she feels sweating too much i think at that moment i don't know why like like obviously like in when you get fever when the fever goes away you sweat like like every, like that's normal but yeah i i think like that would have probably freaked out anyone the way Oh, well, she was actually sweating like she was kind of i don't know like hyperventilating or something like you know like kind of uh panting in a way and then like you know it's like like completely sweating 
so <laughs> i'm sure that would have freaked anyone out like what was even happening and then she kind of like, you know after sleeping she she becomes fine she wakes up and uh, seeing like toru you know like when toru gets in like she didn't even notice kobayashi that kobayashi is fine like you know like she just gives her the pills and like doesn't even look at her like she's panting and like it's like uh, you know like dust everywhere on her clothes and all she's worn out so like she didn't even notice that kobayashi is all fine she just gives it to her and when kobayashi eats it you know and says that yeah like you know i've eaten it i'm probably fine and it's working and toru looks up at her at that moment and actually sees that yeah she's fine so and yeah, that's when like you know like she actually feels relief and <laughs> that and then the side effect of that medicine kobayashi becomes a cat <laughs> and kana has a little fun <laughs> boy all right the next section ilulu ilulu and ta uh, ta take that was his name wasn't it yeah yeah so a doll is found and uh, like obviously like the way it was like left there in a little basket like it was very apparent that someone actually deliberately abandoned that so even though you know like ilulu kind of you know remembered her own own experience and we kind of get to know here what actually happened with the doll she actually left it and i'm sure like you know after the whole like we saw a little flashback uh, even in the previous episode where we saw that you know like how she started to actually um you know her relationship with the humans kind of worsened due to her family's uh, influence and uh, you know like i'm sure it was because of that that she left the doll there and she regretted it but now like you know like she there now that she is here she's saying that yeah even if i regret it i can't get it back so i'm sure that the person who left this here must also be regretting it and <laughs> goes on his on her way to find it and i was kind of thinking like you know i was thinking like doesn't she have some kind of dragon powers to track <laughs> uh, you know like track the person down and then to like you know kobashi actually tells that like kobashi says that uh, can't you like heighten your senses like you don't you have any kind of <laughs> you know dragon powers to do that <laughs> and um, Ilulu is like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> My God, and um, yeah, she tries to go and find it, and the rain kind of dampens the scent and all. But thankfully, Kobayashi and uh, Toru kind of comes in and helps her in that situation. And uh, yeah, like the mental support she in this section she got it from Take, and like you know the support as for the actual help she got it from Kobayashi and Toru. So. you know like everyone helped her little by little and she actually found the girl who left the doll back in the store and uh, you know she actually does regret it so yeah uh, now i wonder who the little two little kids are that we see in the uh, flashback so many times so i'm sure we're going to get more information what happened to them you know like where they are and if they're alive or not i don't think they like even if they like you know were okay at that moment i don't think they're alive anymore because like you know she, like ilulu like she's a dragon she has been alive for a long time so and i'm guessing those two little kids that we see every time are humans so yeah i doubt they're alive but still you know some little back story or information i'm sure we're going to get in the future and uh, we're going to actually get the full picture what actually happened to her why she you know uh like where those kids are what happened all the other stuff <clears throat> yeah so who knows maybe like you know if she goes back to her to the dragon world uh, maybe the place where she left the doll maybe it's still there you know i don't know might that might happen but yeah All right, and yeah, Take helps her, and yeah, I'm sure like this is, like you know, like this is helping her to get the faith back in humans again, because Take is a human, uh, Kobayashi is a human, so both of them helped her, and uh, yeah, you know what I actually think, like uh, Ilulu was very distrustful of humans when she came, and. 
like you know i think even if in a little extent i think all the dragons are somewhat uh wary of humans except uh, kanna i think <laughs> i don't think kanna is distrustful of any humans you know uh, the main reason is because she is still a child according to dragon age you know she's still a child and you know children kind of have a very flexible uh you know impressions and personality where like you know the way they grow up it kind of makes them who they are so because she is still a child she's more influenceable and that's why like you know like she was a little bit distrustful when she came but after she made kobayashi and like you know all the other friends saikawa and her friends i'm sure she trusts humans completely now i think so except kanna all the other dragons fafnir uh most probably luka in in some extent as well very less but still some extent toru you no know, illu they all are distrust mistrustful of humans but you know what i think the person who would probably be able to like you know become fully trustful of humans very fast is illu i think because i one thing i can say that toru has a huge distrust of humans a very deep rooted thing and elma also kind of i think i'm are not trustful of humans either fafnir obviously luka a little bit so most probably i don't know i'm not so sure about luka i be like you know like you can't actually <laughs> like you know understand what she's thinking like she's very what can i say mysterious in a way so i can't say anything about luka does she really mistrust humans or is she like totally cool with them i'm not so sure but fafnir little extent elma kind of toru yeah quite a bit uh mistrustful of humans so i think illu would probably be the first person or first dragon to actually fully trust humans by the way everything is going because her past is connected with the humans and she actually loved humans before so for her to actually change her mind on everything i think that will happen faster than all the other dragons here I might be wrong though but I think the way this is going you know I'm sure she'll start like you know trusting humans completely like I'm not saying completely because obviously there are bad people in this world but you know like the general mistrust that she has I'm sure it'll go away fastest among all the other dragons you know she'll probably be the first one to actually trust humans completely and uh, just like Kanna does I don't know I feel like it so yeah All right, that was it. So that was it, guys. That was my reaction to Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S episode number eight. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Uh, comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know. I'll definitely check them out. And uh, yeah. So yeah, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. So until then, goodbye and have a nice day.